Gusto mo bang malaman kung paano gumawa ng budget? Tara, sabayan mo ako sa aking paggawa ng sample monthly budget for beginners. Hi, I'm Janice, the Pinay Investor. I am a wife and a mom, and I share practical and Bible-based budgeting tips to help you manage your family finances better and to help you achieve your financial goals faster. In today's video, we are going to talk about the basics of budgeting for beginners. According to many financial experts, ang ideal na formula ng pagbabudget ay income minus savings equal expenses. Pero paano kung ang expenses natin ay mas malaki pa kaysa sa income? So ano ba dapat? Since nagsisimula ka pa lang naman at wala ka pang masyadong alam sa pagbabudget, gawin mo muna tong formula na income minus expenses. So sit down, look at your current income and expenses and create a budget. Ano ba ang budgeting? Budgeting is the process of creating a spending plan at ang spending plan na yan, yung plano na yan, ay ang ating budget. Kapag meron tayong budget, alam natin kung saan napupunta ang ating sweldo, alam natin kung sapat ba ang kinikita natin sa dami ng gastos o bayanin every month, at nalalaman din natin kung may naiipon ba tayo para sa ating mga financial goals. Kapag wala tayong malinaw na budget, gastos lang tayo ng gastos at parang walang napupuntahan ang sweldo natin. Sabi nga sa Proverbs 21.20, Wise people live in wealth and luxury, but stupid people spend their money as fast as they get it. Gusto mo bang malaman kung paano gumawa ng budget? Tara, sabayan mo ako sa aking paggawa ng sample monthly budget for beginners. Step 1, alamin mo kung magkano talaga ang kinikita mo every month. If you are creating a family budget like me, pwede na natin ditong isama yung income ng ating husband or wife at itotal natin yung ating income. Sa sample budget na gagawin natin ngayon, let's just assume na ang total income ng family ng husband and wife is 50,000 pesos. Step 2, list down all your expenses kasama na yung fixed and variable expenses. Sa fixed expenses, ito yung mga bills and expenses natin na fixed ng amount every month, kagaya ng house, either rent or mortgage, kasama din dito yung car kung meron, internet, um, credit card debts kung fixed yung amount na binabayaran nyo every month, at iba pa. Sa variable expenses naman, ito yung mga bills and expenses natin na nag-iiba-iba per month depende sa ating konsumo o gastos, kagaya ng electricity, water, gas, food and groceries. Pwede nyo rin isama dito yung inyong personal fund or play fund kung meron kayo for dad, for mom, or for your kids, eat out fund or food deliveries. Um, again, this is a personal budget, so i-tweak nyo na lang kung ano yung applicable sa inyo at ilagay nyo na lang kung ano talaga yung actual na pinagkakagastosan nyo. Kung gusto nyo baguhin yung categories, pwedeng-pwede yan. So, nasa inyo yan. Sabi nga, there is no perfect budget. The best budget is the one that really works for you. So, kung ano yung nag-work sa'yo at kung saan ka komportable, yun ang sundin mo. Ako, personally, I like to categorize my expenses into three. So, number one, spending. Number two, giving. And number three, saving. In terms of giving, I give my tithes or the 10% of my income to the church. Naniniwala ako na lahat ng natatanggap ko ng aming family ay galing kay God and I feel good giving back a portion of what I earn through tithing and offering. Sabi nga sa Malakay 3.10, Bring the full amount of your tithes to the temple so that there will be plenty of food there. Put me to the test and you will see that I will open the windows of heaven and pour out on you in abundance all kinds of good things. Aside from tithing, nag allocate din kami for family support at alam ko marami sa ating mga Pinoy ang tumutulong financially sa ating mga kapamilya, lalo na ngayong pandemic na marami talaga ang nawalan ng trabaho o nagsara ang negosyo. Sa ating sample budget, I will allocate 1,000 pesos for family support. Sa savings naman, I will allocate 2,000 pesos. 
Ngayon naman, itotal natin lahat ng ating expenses including yung fixed and variable expenses. So, ang total ng ating expenses ay 42,000 pesos. Under our giving category naman, we have 5,000 for tithe plus 1,000 for family support. Ang total is 6,000 pesos. Under savings category, 2,000 pesos. Kung titingnan naman natin in terms of percentage ang ating budget, 84% ay under sa category ng spending, 12% naman sa category ng giving, and 4% for savings. As you can see, just by creating a budget, makikita na natin kagad kung saan napupunta ang ating sweldo. Sabi nga sa Habakkuk 2.2, write it down clearly so that it can be read at a glance. Alam mo na kagad kung ilang percent ang expenses, ang giving, at ang savings mo. Kaya napakahalaga talaga ng pagbabudget. If you have a budget, you have control over your money and not your money controlling you. Para kang commanding general at yung pera mo naman yung mga sundalo. Yung budget mo yung battle plan and you have full control kung saan mo sila gagamitin. Pag wala kang budget o plano, yung pera mo kung saan saan lang napupunta at nagagamit mo ito kahit sa mga unplanned expenses. At nagtataka ka bago pa dumating ang sweldo mo kung bakit ubus na ang pera o short ka na sa budget. Now that you already know where your money is going based on your list of expenses, alamin mo naman kung ano ang goals mo. Ano-ano ba yung mga gusto mong pag-ipunan o paghandaan for the future? Do you want to pay off your debt? Do you want to set up your emergency fund or buy your dream house, travel with family, or retirement fund? When you have goals, it motivates you to prioritize saving over unnecessary spending. Mas ginaganahan kang mag-ipon dahil alam mong may goals ka. Pag hindi malinaw sa iyo ang goals mo, hindi mo binibigyang halaga ang pag-iipon o kaya naman nag-iipon ka nga pero pag may nakita kang bagong gadget, binibili mo na kagad kahit hindi mo naman talaga ito kailangan. Sabi nga sa Proverbs 29.18, Where there is no vision, the people perish. It's the same thing with budgeting. Pag wala kang magandang plano o goal sa pera mo, mabilis yan mawala o maubos. Also, when you write your goals, make sure they are smart goals. Specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. Halimbawa, kung ang goal mo ay uh, to pay off your debt, alamin mo kung magkano exactly ang debt mo at kailan mo ito gustong mabayaran lahat. If for example, your debt is 12,000 pesos and you want to be debt free in 6 months, you need to allocate 2,000 pesos every month for the next 6 months to pay off your debt completely. Another thing about your goals, make sure you know your why's behind your goals. Bakit gusto mong maging debt-free? Bakit gusto mong makaipon for emergency fund? What's in it for you and your family? Ako, isa sa mga wise ko is, of course, my family, my daughter. I want her to go to the best school and learn from the best teachers. I want our family to travel, to experience going to other places. So that's just some of my goals, my whys. It's important to know your goals and think about your whys because your vision gives direction, it inspires motivation, and it helps you persevere. Now that you have your goals, let's talk about your action plans naman. Kailangan may gawin tayo para matupad natin ang goals natin. Mahirap yung puro salita lang, puro pangarap lang, tas wala naman tayong ginagawa. Sabi nga sa James 2.2, Faith without action is dead. Kaya we need to take action. How? First, let's review our expenses and let's find ways to reduce or cut expenses so that we can save more. In terms of fixed expenses, hindi natin masyadong mababago to or makukontrol dahil fixed na to. But with your variable expenses, you may find some items there that you can cut or remove completely so that you can allocate more into your savings. Aside from cutting your expenses, you may also try to find ways to increase your income. Find a sideline, sell something online, offer your services, or start your own business. 
As you start budgeting, you'll find many different methods that will help you manage your finances better. Example is the 50-20-30 rule kung saan 50% para sa needs, 20% for savings, and 30% para sa wants. But remember, you don't need to follow just one method. Check all the available methods out there, try them out, tweak them, and create your own budgeting method. Like what I said earlier, the best budget is the one that really works for you. Your budgeting method will depend on your values, beliefs, and priorities. If you value giving and savings, this is how it may look like. 10, 20, 70. So 10% for giving, 20% for savings, and 70% for your expenses. So you will work out with the 70% for your expenses. Again, you can tweak it. You can make it 20, 30, 50. So it depends on you. It depends on how much you make. It depends on um, your expenses, your goals. So it depends on you. No matter how much you earn or make, it's important that you have a plan, that you have a budget. Sabi nga, it's not how much you earn, but what you do with what you earn. Likewise, it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep. Dahil sabi nga sa Matthew 25.10, if you are faithful in managing small amounts, you will be put in charge of large amounts. And when the time comes, we also want to hear our Master, our God, to commend us and say, Well done, you good and faithful servant. At the end of the day, we need to realize that everything we have, lahat ng meron tayo, lahat ng pag-aari natin ay pag-aari ni Lord. We are just stewards of all the gifts, the resources, the possessions, and the money that He has entrusted us. I hope this video has been helpful to you. I hope may natutunan kayo sa basics ng budgeting for beginners. If this is something that you're interested in, please consider subscribing and turn on your notification bell so that you'll be the first to know when I release new videos. Thank you and I appreciate it. Happy budgeting!